bring this nation to the point of giving birth and just leaving it. I will surely deliver this nation. And then we went next to, we continued where the Lord began to point out to me Acts chapter 9, where the Apostle Paul, who goes from Saul of Tarsus to the Apostle Paul in Acts 9. So there was like a significant um, birthing of his calling during that time. And it's amazing because I believe with all my heart that this will be a month where so many callings will be birthed. Dreams will come alive. Dreams that you have had for a very long time will begin to come alive. And so as I was um, reading in the word of God, I kept on feeling and sensing that even though God gives you a calling, even though God gives you a dream, what ends up happening is even that comes under attack. And a lot of the time we sense, okay, if this is from God, why am I being attacked? If this was God who's given me that dream, why am I under this intense pressure? Why is that? Well, let me tell you something, that this is how you know that this dream or this um, calling is from the Lord. It is when you go through fire and it is when you, in that place, you will experience and know that it is God who is with you in the fire. So as I was reading, I just felt that we're coming into a season where so much will be under attack. Your voice will be under attack. Your vote will be under attack. There's so many lies circulating around. And a lot of the time, people are afraid to speak the truth because they don't want to be canceled. They don't want, they're afraid because they want to fit in. They, they don't want to um, feel like I'm the only one with this. But we need to pray. And let me tell you, one of the prayers I would love for us to pray together, Acts 4.29. In Acts 4.29, the birthing of the apostles calling had just happened. They were birthed in Acts 2. Remember where Jesus said to them that you will be filled with the Holy Spirit and you will be my witnesses. So they were filled in the Holy Spirit and they began to witness. In Acts 3, they see a blind man, a lame man, and they heal the lame man. And you know that 5,000 people are added to the church because of this miracle. Well, guess what? They are under the fire. And it's not because they have done anything wrong. It's because they, a, a calling has just been birthed and the enemy is reacting to the call. So a lot of the time when you're under attack, it is the enemy reacting to the call of God. It's exactly like when Jesus was born and you remember the wise men went to King Herod and said to him, there's a king that's born, that was born because we saw his star. Well, guess what happened? He executed all the children two years and under because he was reacting to the call. So first of all, I'm here to tell you that if you are sensing a fire because of the call of God on your life, if you're sensing a fire because you're carrying this mantle and you just feel attacked. And let me tell you, you feel so attacked by family members. Like you just feel that around my family, I can't share anything. I can't even share my political views. I can't share my Christian views. I can't even tell them what I really um, believe because I will come under fire. Let me tell you something. Acts 4.29 is one of my favorite prayer. And I just believe that we need to begin to pray this prayer together. And uh, this is a very special prayer. And this is where the apostles were under fire and they warned them not to speak in this name ever again. 
well this is what they pray and if if someone's writing it down in the chat we could read it together but i feel it is very significant for the times that we are in right now it says this now lord consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness you want to begin to receive holy spirit boldness in the times and the seasons that we're about to step into because if you don't receive divine boldness you will not be able to continue in your calling and in your destiny and so they said this lord consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness i don't know why i felt this morning to come on live and to pray for boldness because so many people right now they are afraid they're afraid to speak up they're afraid to stand up they're afraid to even tell you that they're christians but they said lord would you enable us to speak your word with great boldness and then they prayed to stretch out your hands to heal and to perform miraculous signs through the name of your holy servant Jesus. So the next part of the prayer is that God, would you stretch out your hand to heal? And to me, it's phenomenal because they just got in trouble for healing. They just healed this lame man and they pretty much got in trouble for healing. And now they are praying and saying, God, do it again. In other words, we are not afraid of the consequences. Well, that then brings me to the title of today's message. Because what ended up happening is that in Acts 5 and verses 17, the high priest and his officials were jealous. And you will get to see the spirit of jealousy operating rampant in these days they were so jealous and in verses 18 it says they arrested the apostles and put them in a public jail um, and then but an angel of the lord came at night um, came at night opened the gates of the jail and brought them out so they wanted to limit the, the message. They wanted to put them in jail. They wanted to shove them in that jail so that they don't open their mouth. But as I was praying this morning, the Lord clearly said to me, and I had to write it down, get ready to experience an angelic jail break. Can I say that again? And if you're hearing me, please um, write it down in the comments get ready to receive and to or to experience an angelic jail break there is a there is a lot of angelic activities right now there are so many people and they're like lord we are desperate for you to intervene in our country we are desperate for you to intervene in our life we are desperate for you and so many of you you're like i just feel like i'm in a prison i just feel that i'm just stuck i feel that i'm locked up I feel, and let me tell you, a prison doesn't necessarily mean like a jail cell, but it could also mean there are so many people in prison in their mind. They just feel that they don't have it in them to be free. But the Bible says, I want someone to write it in the chat, Acts 5, 19, but an angel of the Lord came and brought them out then he told them go to the temple and give the people this message so hear me in the spirit there was an angel that went in and got them out later on we'll find out that then when they call for them that the, the jail is still locked and the guards were still standing outside but who knows that the supernatural power of god is able to do in your life the impossible even though people will put restrictions on you 
even though they'll try to put you in a prison, even though they'll tell you do this and don't do this, you have a God who's going to be a jailbreaker. Every jail, I prophesy to you in Jesus' name that every jail in your life right now is being broken. Everything that has limited you, everything that has shut your voice and you just feel, Yvonne, I don't even know how to speak anymore. I don't even want to speak because I don't want to come under attack. I heard the Holy Spirit say, get ready to experience an angelic jail break. And let me tell you something, that word resonated with me because there was a time in my life where I was stuck in a, uh, well, I was stuck in tradition. I was stuck in a very traditional church that didn't believe in the Holy Spirit. And I couldn't just leave because that was going to cause a lot of damage. And I just felt like, Lord, I am stuck in this jail and I just can't get out because there's no way out for me. But I remember God sent somebody in that jail to speak to me about the power of the Holy Spirit. And it was in that jail that I encountered and was filled in the Holy Spirit. And it was in that place that God also allowed my husband to experience the same thing. And we ran, we ran for our lives. And let me tell you, the jail is still there. There are so many people still jailed, but we are out. And I am prophesying to you in Jesus' name that in this coming season, even in the month of September, you are about to sense angelic activity. You are about to experience an angelic jail break. I know that Tiffany has just wrote it in the chat and others too. I want you to prophesy up angelic jail break. God, you are coming into this place where I just feel limited, where I just feel that my freedom has been taken away, that my voice has been taken away and you are coming in this place and you are delivering me. And let me tell you, when it comes to the supernatural power of God, see, we look at a jail and we feel, you know, it, it's meant to separate people from the world. It's almost like we look at a door or a gate and it's meant to, again, bring separation um, from, from in a place. But if you even see when Jesus rose up from the dead with a glorified body, re you remember what happened? The disciples were afraid. They were behind closed doors and the Lord appeared to them. I'm here to prophesy and tell you, it doesn't matter if you just feel, Yvonne, the doors are closed. You have a God who is able to come through closed doors. You might feel, Yvonne, you don't understand. There is no way out for me. I'm here to tell you that you cannot get yourself out. But there is a God who is able to send his angel to shut the mouth of the lion and to get you out in trouble triumph. And so this is going to be something that you will sense and experience. Well, the beautiful thing is God did not set them free, okay, to go and go for, you know, a vacation. That wasn't the reason. He gave them a message in verses 20. He says, go to the temple and give the people this message. God will set you free when your heart is in line with the kingdom. And so they went out with a proclamation of the gospel. They went out with a declaration of the gospel. And the Bible says that when they went out in verses 27, Acts 5, 27, it says, then they brought the apostles before the council where the high priest confronted them. And this is what the high priest, this is the confrontation. The high priest says this to the apostles. He says to them, we gave you strict orders never again to teach in this man's name. Hear me. They didn't even want to pronounce the name of Jesus. So they're not even saying that name. They're just saying, we gave you strict orders never again to teach in this man's name. And you just think, what a dictator. Why are you enforcing this on me? 
Who are you to enforce? If I want to speak about an experience that I've experienced, I am. I'm, I should share that. And so I love what he said. And then he said this to them. He said, instead, you have filled all Jerusalem with your teaching about him and you want to make us responsible for his death. So he says to them, we set you not even to mention his name, and here you are, you filled all of Jerusalem. And I can just sense the joy in their hearts. They're probably looking at each other, thinking, really? <laughs> Did we really do that? That's awesome. There's only a handful of us and we were able to spread like, are you trying to tell me that the name of Jesus has made headlines? Like, are you trying to tell me that all of Jerusalem now knows about Jesus because of us? And so you get to understand that even later on when they flog them, they go and they're like, we were so joyous because of that. But then you get to see that this demonic spirit that is trying to silence the believers is still in operation today. And what I absolutely love about the apostles is they did not plead for mercy. They did not say, you got to remember, this is the, the council of the Sanhedrin. And that, this is the same place that sentenced Jesus to death. So really, they should have been pleading for mercy. They should, have, they should have said, look, we're so sorry. Please spare our life. That should have been the attitude. But that was not what they did. What they did was that there was a strong proclamation rather than a plea for mercy. And I am just believing that as I am releasing this over you right now, that there's a God-given boldness that is about to penetrate and enter your voice. And you will begin to raise up your voice and begin to speak about what you stand for, who you belong to, okay? Especially if you have a testimony, if this Jesus changed your life, if you used to have no hope and now he's given you a new hope, if you had no assurance and now he's given you assurance, if you used to be a drug addict or an alcoholic and he set you free, you have a voice. And you need to raise your voice with a proclamation. And so Peter is not afraid. He's not, uh, he's not begging for mercy. He says to them, Peter and the other apostles replied. In other words, they all replied together. We must obey God rather than human beings. We must obey God rather than human beings. And they begin to say the God of our ancestors. He, they're speaking to the Sanhedrin court. And they're saying the God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging on a cross. But God exalted him to his own right hand side. He exalted him. This Jesus, the one that you don't even want to mention his name, has been exalted to the highest position. He is now seated at God's right hand side. And then they say this to him, and we are witnesses of this. Okay, so there is a proclamation and you are coming into a place of your thinking, Yvonne, you guys came on live. You, you guys did say that God is um, birthing my calling. What do I do next? We need to, you need to begin to raise up a voice of victory. You need to begin with your proclamation. Do not allow your voice to be silenced. I remember, and I addressed that slightly last live when I was doing a live, that when we received, when, well, when our eyes were opened and we got to understand that God's the healer, that he still heals and he uses ordinary believers. I remember there was one meeting that we did back in Sydney, Australia, and 
we just felt that we should be calling out words of knowledge. So I remember we stood out the front and we were just like, if you have pain in your body, if you have, you know, this eye condition or this whatever, we kept on calling names and people came up the, up the front and the power of God fell on those people and they were miraculously healed. And we were so joyous. But the thing is, a lot of our friends were religious and we came under fire. And I mean intense fire. I remember some of our friends would say to us, could you just not pray for anybody in the meeting because that offends people? Um, could you just take sick people to the side or like to the back room and pray for them because that's just really offensive? And I was like, offensive? What is offensive about the healing power of Jesus? I don't understand what is offensive about that. So we were like, I remember once they threatened us and we were going to, again, the next meeting and they were part of our ministry team. And as we were like going, one by one, this is our ministry team, called us, texted us, and they're like, um, hey, Vaughn, Mina, we won't be able to make it today. And we we're like, why? And oh, because we just done like this healing thing, you know, just bullying us. And I just broke crying. And I said, Lord, I remember when, you know, when Randy Clark laid his hands on us, he said that we would heal the sick. And your word says that we would heal the sick. And I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And I burst into tears in the car. And I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit saying to me, I stopped for the one. Will you stop for the one? And I said, yes, Lord. He said, if some, if only one person turns up to tonight's meeting, would you pray for them? I said, yes, Lord. Well, I go to the meeting and this is nuts because the ministry team didn't come, but we had over 300 people in the congregation. Now that's huge for people that have just started their own ministry. We had to take out chairs. I remember the worship leader on the stage, she was kneeling because the glory of the Lord was so heavy that she could not even stand. And I was like, Lord, I'm so thankful that your word, your boldness, that we never stopped, that we continued all through our times in ministry to speak of your goodness, that you are a healer, that you are a deliverer. And how many times did the enemy try to silence and to shut our voice? And that is why I titled this, the enemy has been is furious. So where did I get the title from? I want you to write it down, Acts 5.33. When Peter was saying those proclamations, we must obey God rather than human authority. Um, it says this, when they heard this, they were furious and wanted to put them to death. Is that not outrageous? Just because the apostles shared their testimony, just because they proclaimed the name of Jesus, they want to kill them? Well, let me tell you, nothing has changed. And today, if you will stand for the truth, there'll be people around you who will want to kill you. And maybe not in the physical sense, but even in the psychological sense, even in the emotional sense, even in the sense of just counseling your voice, or in the sense of we just don't want to even hear about what you have to say, belittling you, making you feel insignificant. This is happening right now. So when they heard this, they were furious and they wanted to put them to death. If you want that, yes, thank you. It's Acts 5.33. And then it goes on to say that there was a wise man and his name was Gamaliel. And he was a teacher of the law and he was honored by all the people. And he stood in the Sanhedrin and ordered that the men be put outside. Now I'm going to pause here for a second. If all the apostles, I want you to think with me, if all the apostles were put outside and nobody was in this room except the high priest and the people of the council, how in the world do we know of the conversation that went on inside the courtroom? Well, let me tell you. 
My only reasonable answer to how we know what actually happened is that I believe that soul of Tarsus was in this council meeting. He was in this room. Well, let me tell you, and you want to know the Bible scripture for that. Acts 26, 10. In Acts 26, the Apostle Paul is sharing his testimony and he's speaking about his background. And in verses 10, he says, indeed, I did just that. He said, I, I did just that in Jerusalem, authorized by the leading priests. I caused many believers there to be sent to prison. And I cast my vote against them when they were condemned to death. I'm going to read that again. So the Apostle Paul is saying that I caused many believers to be sent to prison. And I cast my vote against them when they were condemned to death. In other words, the Apostle Paul, who was Saul of Tarsus, was in this meeting and he was one of the people who wanted to condemn the apostles to death. And you know that later on, when he met the Lord on the road of, to Damascus, he would have been in connection with Luke and he would have told Luke exactly what happened in the courtroom and what happened behind closed doors. So they are furious. And I can tell you, you are coming into a time where there's be, there'll be so many around you that will be furious because they are about to see the hand of God move in your life and in your country. And they will not be able to stand up. And this is what is happening. They are furious. It's like, what do we do with them? How do we kill them? I mean, they just healed a lame man who was sick for 40 years. He was lame for that long. So they were furious. And I can just feel in the last few days that there's been so many people and they are furious. They just do not know what to do, okay? You just have to go and hear a couple of the media channels and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And when they are furious, they create lies. And a lot of the time we can panic and we can be like, God, what's going on? But here it comes. Gamaliel says this to them. He addressed the Sanhedrin. And in verses 35 of Acts 5, he says, Men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to these men. And then he gives two examples of rebels. And those rebels, one of them, his name was Judas the Galilean. He appeared he, was, he claimed to be a prophet, he had a big following, and eventually he was killed and his followers were killed too. So he's saying to them, therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave this, these men alone, okay? God is saying that over you. Whatever the enemy is trying to do, there's a proclamation leave my son alone, leave my daughter alone. And then he says, let them go. Okay. Then he says this for, if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. I'm going to say that again. <laughs> if their purpose or their activity is of human origin, it will fail. I'm going to say that. I want you to begin to say that, Lord, I thank you because every activity that's happening in my country that is of human origin shall fail. Every activity in my life that is from human origin will fall to the ground. It will not continue. All those attacks all those threats that are trying to limit me will fall to the ground. They will fail. I will live to experience the goodness of God. But then he said this to them. But if it is from God, 
you will not be able to stop these men if this is from God you will not be able to stop these men and I'm here to tell you that whatever God whatever originates from God whoever God anoints and God appoints no power in hell will stand against that calling no demon will be able to stand against what God called you to do even though you can come to a place where you just like Yvonne I, I didn't even know if I'm even gonna wake up the next morning I'm here to tell you if what you're doing is from God no one will be able to stop what you are doing it will be like a hurricane it will be like an avalanche it will take over it will be resurrected it will be fruitful why because God himself is the one who will be able to sustain it I'm, I feel even people watching me now and you're in ministry and you just feel Yvonne I'm under even a lot of attack I'm under a lot of financial attack let me tell you something and someone will want to write this down if it's God's will it's God's will if what God called you to do is from him he will be able in the name of Jesus to to provide for you to lift you up but then he says you will only find yourself fighting against God so he says to them if you want to continue killing these men and what the and their message is from God you're gonna find yourself fighting with God and this is what I see I see that there are so many ignorant people out there and they don't understand what's happening in the world in of the in the spiritual dimension and they're right now fighting against God and they're just thinking you know I'm gonna try and, and win this and win that and a lot of us are panicking I'm here to tell you that you are about to sense the hand of God like never before you're about to feel and sense God and and I want to even end with this because I believe and so many people I would love for you all to write this verse so many people are about to be exalted by God Jesus was exalted by his heavenly father and you are about to be exalted by God himself you know in Acts 5 verses 31 Peter says God exalted him to the highest position God exalted him but then guess what get ready for this verse and I would love for everyone to type this verse Psalm 99 verses 9 who's ready for that verse now <laughs> Psalm 99 verses 9 you're coming into 999 ever since I started to share this message I've been seeing triple nines everywhere um and it's it's crazy yes Psalm 99 verses 9 you're about to experience such an exaltation in your calling in your ministry and it will just be an elevation it, exaltation means God is lifting you higher God is elevating you to a place where no one can touch your calling or your destiny it says that God exalted Jesus not to the second heaven but above the name of Jesus is far above every name that is invoked every name that is proclaimed in this world and even in the world to come and you are entering a place of exaltation thank you so many people are writing Psalm 99 verses 9 and I just love it because it's so easy to remember it is so easy to mark it in your mind and just to say Lord as Yvonne prays I am entering that place of exaltation I am entering this place Lord with those around me and this is crazy because because since the start of the month the Lord was speaking to me from Exodus where God says to Moses I'm doing something in your life 
I'm performing such miracles that were never performed before. And people around you will not be able to believe that that's what I'm doing in your life. And the Lord said this to me, do you dare to believe me that what I'm about to do in your life was never done before? And that was a big, big, big challenge because I'm thinking, Lord, there are so many others, but I understand that each one of us, we have a unique calling and our calling is different to other people's callings. So Psalm 99 verses 9, I want to read it for you. It, it says this, exalt the Lord our God. So we need to exalt the Lord, our God. In other words, God exalted Jesus in the heavenly places. But if he's not exalted in our minds, if he's not exalted in our proclamation, if he's not exalted in our faith, then we're wasting our time. But this is the night to say, I am exalting you, Lord, above what I'm hearing in the media, above what what, what, what's going on in my life, above challenges, above rejection, above what is being said about me. So I want you to begin to say, I'm exalting you. Yes, people are typing 999 and worship at his holy mountain. So there's two things we need to do. Number one, exalt the Lord. Number two, worship him at his holy mountain. For the Lord, our God is holy. In other words, he is separated. He is above all. He is the creator of everything. He is in charge. He is the alpha and the omega. And in him, you'll be the head and not the tail. So I want to pray this prayer. So wherever you are, let's begin. Thank you. People are typing 999. Exalt the Lord. Exalt the Lord. Exalt the Lord. Father, we thank you. Lord, we just thank you. There's been such a warfare on this message, God. And I just thank you that you have a way of getting your word, this word to your children and i just thank you lord in the name of jesus i prophesy an exaltation in jesus name in the area in every area of their life that even tonight in the name of jesus shall mark a shift in tonight it shall mark a place god where just they feel i am not here tonight to beg for mercy i am not here to ask i am here to proclaim you as my king and to elevate you and to declare that the name of jesus is above every name father in the name of jesus i prophesy an exaltation in every area of their life i say that there's some of you you're watching me right now and and your relationship with your children is under the fire right now the enemy is trying to destroy this relationship but the lord says get ready for not only a restoration of the relationship but an exaltation where i am taking this to the next level there's some of you you've been promoted the lord wants to promote you but there's a hindrance and the lord says get ready for your exaltation your promotion comes from me says the lord there are others and you just sense that you're in jail you're in this place where you just can't seem to break out and the lord says get ready to experience angelic jail break Father, I thank you. There's many of you right now. If you feel that you, you want to come and you want to prepare your heart to sow an offering into this, all you need to do is scan that QR code and say, you know what, Lord? Tonight, I'm exalting you in the area of my finances. I'm exalting you in the area where I was, where there was a warfare, in the area where 
where there's a fight, even if you've lost your job, even if you just feel that there's been attack in this area, there's many of you, you're appropriating this Psalm, Psalm 99 verses 9. And let me tell you something. This is amazing. It says, exalt the Lord and worship him. And you're like, Yvonne, what does offering have to do with worshiping him? Well, the wise men, it says, when they met Jesus, because he, they knew that they were appropriate Approaching a king, the Bible says that they opened up their treasures and they gave gold, they gave myrrh, they gave frankincense. So the two are connected. So as you are coming into this place of exaltation in this month, come and say, Lord, I am exalting you with my proclamation. I am exalting you in my faith. I am exalting you and putting you above what I'm going through right now. And here it comes. I am coming with, I'm preparing. I'm not just giving an offering, Lord. I'm coming to say that this is a seed that will break this jail. And it's it's amazing how the number nine being connected with childbearing, the moment a seed is sown, a woman gets pregnant. So the number nine begins a cycle of fruitfulness. And so if you are believing this right now, go to the website, write in the comment what you are believing God for. I did mention it many times. We have a prayer team and they're, they're with us. Um, and that email is prayer at celebratefreedomministries.org. So you can send in, we'll send in the comment section, you can write what you're believing God for, or you can send an email directly to them. But I'm going to pray for those who are sowing right now. Father, I thank you, Lord, for those people who are coming with a humble and gentle heart. And they're like, Lord, I'm exalting you in the month of September, I am exalting you, God, above what I'm going through, above my trials, above my weaknesses, above what I'm experiencing. And I just thank you. I prophesy over my situation that there shall be an angelic jailbreak to get me into freedom, to birth my calling, to raise my voice. Father, I thank you because everything, Lord, I ask that has been limiting them keeping them, hindering them is being broken in the name of Jesus right now. Thank you. There are many of you um, and you're typing in the chat. Make sure in the comment section, um, as you're giving, just write what you are believing God for so we can pray with you. Share the message. Thank you for staying on with me. Thank you. Um, there's been a lot of problems with the Wi-Fi tonight, but God's good. Um, love you. Thank you for all these people who wished a happy birthday. Um, pray for me. My birthday is tomorrow. So keep me in prayer. Pray for my husband, our children, um, and the ministry. God has done a phenomenal job. He blew my mind, and I'm forever grateful. So thank you so much for everything. Have a blessed, blessed, blessed night. Bye-bye.